progesterone testing and vaginal cytology. Hello again from Central West Canine Breeding. We have discussed the hormonal control of the estrous cycle in another episode on Aranavet TV. Understanding these sequential hormone changes and the rise in progesterone gives us an easy way of monitoring the progression of the season and ovulation. Measuring the LH surge is not practical due to its rapid spike and sampling every few hours would be required. Additionally, once an ovulatory season is triggered, events may occur such as split seasons and extended seasons which require monitoring and are not predictable from the LH surge alone. So, how do we measure progesterone? At Central West Canine Breeding, we use the industry standard immunoassay, the minivitis. It is important to understand the level of accuracy of such a machine. It will analyze serum samples down to one nanogram. One nanogram is one one billionth of a gram. So we are talking analysis at the molecular level. Such is the minute changes we are monitoring when testing progesterone. If you have had a progesterone reading at another clinic, it is important to be sure of the units of measurement. Some results may come as nanomoles per litre. The conversion ratio is 3.18 to convert from one unit to another. For example, 25 nanograms per mil is the same as 79.5 nanomoles per litre. That is 25 multiplied by 3.18. So when do we measure progesterone? Ovulation days vary as shown in the graph from day 3 to day 45. Usually the first test is done on day 7 or 8 of season to try and identify the LH surge. A progesterone level of 1.5 to 2 nanograms per mil. Progesterone levels usually rise to greater than 5 nanograms per mil by day 2 to 4 post LH surge. The LH surge is considered as day 0 and ovulation occurs two days after the LH surge. The ova or eggs must mature for a further two days, making the fertile period then on average four to six days after the LH surge, depending on the initial rate of rise of progesterone, testing may be done every two or three days, then daily as vaginal cytology indicates change. At times we may even test twice daily in some bitches to ensure the season is progressing normally. This is particularly true with giant breeds whose progesterone can rise quickly. So what does the progesterone number mean? After spending $30,000 on an immunochemistry vitus analyzer, the number result it produces means nothing by itself. There is no magic progesterone number level that once a bitch has achieved, it is safe to implant or breed. Even though the science is precise, there is an art in the interpretation of progesterone levels. That's why I call it the art and science of progesterone testing. It is important to look for the rate of progesterone rise considered with serial vaginal cytology for optimum breeding results. The progesterone results should be available within 90 minutes of sampling, not the next day. Immunochemistry testing at the clinic is therefore essential for optimum results. It is also important to consider other external factors which may influence the true progesterone value. I call these seven deadly sins of progesterone testing. We will briefly look at these seven factors to be considered, all of which certainly add to the art of progesterone testing. Laboratory variants. 
will occur due to different methods of analysis such as chemiluminescence or radioimmune assay. If you take blood and send it to four different laboratories, then you are likely to get four different results. Which one are you going to believe and why? It's essential to use one laboratory, one calibrated machine, whose numbers can be trusted and applied correctly to manage your breeding. Sample variance is the way the blood sample is handled after collection, and this will also affect the progesterone reading. Use a plain tube and allow the blood to clot at room temperature. If the blood is refrigerated after sampling, a lower progesterone result will occur. Breed variance is also observed. Large or giant breeds may rise progesterone levels rapidly, often doubling in 12 hours. We often test large breeds twice daily, given this tendency for rapid rises. Small breeds often rise more slowly. Of course, each bitch is different and assessed individually for their seasonal progression. Climatic variance is also something to be aware of. In hot weather, daily jumps of up to 16 nanograms per mil are not uncommon, whereas in cold weather, progesterone rise may be slow or even set back for a few days. Bitches imported from the Northern Hemisphere need to be watched carefully until fully acclimatized. Transport variance will affect the progesterone level. Stress, anxiety, confinement and hypothermia will increase the progesterone level. If blood is taken soon after arriving at the clinic, then look at the vaginal cytology closely before any decision is made about breeding. Delayed, false or split seasons are common if transport stress has occurred. Daily variance is not uncommon. Progesterone levels are higher early in the morning, often lower in the middle of the day, and higher again late evening. We often test twice daily and watch vaginal cytology as some bitches may show profound daily variance. Ovarian functional variance occurs with ovarian cysts and complicates the interpretation of the progesterone curve. If suspected, we usually recommend a surgical implant so the ovaries can be examined and any cysts ruptured at the time. There is a familial tendency for cyst formation. Vaginal cytology. Vaginal cytology is as equally important a tool as progesterone testing to monitor the progress of the bitch's season and the timing of mating. The common cell types we see are parabasal cells, intermediate cells, superficial cells, bacteria, white blood cells and red blood cells. When interpreting the vaginal smear we look for the presence and proportion of four basic cell types parabasal, intermediate, superficial and anuclear. These cells mature and change from one type to another under the influence of hormones as the estrous cycle progresses. With anestrous we mainly see parabasal and intermediate cells White blood cells, known as neutrophils, may also be present, but don't usually indicate an infection. With proestrous, red blood cells increase in large numbers and superficial cells appear. Parabasals disappear and bacteria are usually present. As we progress into estrous, superficial cells predominate 
and a few red blood cells are also present. Superficial cells are thinning and their nuclei are less visible, a process called cornification. In diestrus, we see the superficial cells rapidly disappearing, whilst intermediates and parabasals return quickly. White blood cells and bacteria are also often present. By knowing the common cell types and the stages they appear and disappear as the season progresses, provides so much information. Vaginal cytology can alarm you to split seasons, extended seasons, fault seasons and pathological seasons where the bitch goes off and is not suitable for breeding despite having ovulated. I trust this overview of progesterone testing and vaginal cytology gives you a better understanding of the procedures and the way your bitch is managed at Central West Canine Breeding. The progesterone science is precise to one one billionth of a gram. However, there is an art in managing and interpreting those precise numbers to maximize your chances of a successful conception. Should you have any questions about progesterone testing and vaginal cytology, our staff at Central West Canine Breeding would be glad to answer all your queries. We will cover more examples of the necessity for progesterone testing in an upcoming video on maximizing your chances of a successful conception. Until then, stay healthy and enjoy your healthy dog.